Hey, what's up, guys? Time for Scotch Gambit with the Black Piece. Uh, lots of requests I got by players who play E5, and most of you who are just medium level players, beginners, or lower guys. You just play against E4, E5. And I got like so many requests. How should we play with the Black Pieces against this Gambit? As you know, I covered it somewhere on the channel for white. And now you just have to uh, find the proper ways of dealing with it. Even Magnus Carlsen played it 15 days ago against my ex-student Grandmaster Eric Hansen Chesbra. Uh, Eric Hansen occasionally uh, plays e5, but Magnus Carlsen also occasionally plays this Scotch Gambit with white pieces and wins all his games. So it's time to uh, take a look at this variation and to show you like tricks and to show some really new and critical stuff against this opening. So how does it work? After e4, e5, white goes with knight f3, knight c6, d4, e takes, bishop c4. So they begin like a scotch opening, but instead of taking by knight on d4, they just go with bishop c4. So here... And in this video, I'm just going to give you like the most important variations and suggestions how to trade it with black pieces. Even higher rated guys can learn a lot out of this video because this is like a pretty nice recap of the best variations for black. So after like bishop c4, we play knight f6. I know most of you at first glance might find this move very dangerous and difficult because they can go with e5 but that's gonna be the main line and we won't cover it just now so they have three moves they have morphis variation with the knight g5 knight on g5 threatens pawn on f7 and bishop on c4 and knight on g5 uh, creates a very dangerous threat on f7 luckily we have d5 possibility to oppose that and when they take on d5 we don't play knight d5 why don't we play knight d5 because they have queen f3 or they have knight f7 in both of these cases they're just completely winning even a knight c3 uh, could be good but of course uh, good enough uh, for white in this position even castle could be as the most logical move so absolutely everything works for white and don't you ever dare to take my knight crucial move in your concept has to be this queen e7 move you give check you don't get a pawn and looks like you're gonna have difficulties finding ways to get a pawn back on d5 so how do you play you play queen e7 and they gotta go with a king f1 if queen e2 you immediately oppose everything with the knight on before you threat knight c2 you want to get the pieces back you want to trade the pieces off i mean queens off and you know what if with the black pieces you have so many threats after only seven moves if you can easily get a pawn back on d5 if you're threatening knight c2 almost lethal threat here they can hardly uh, count on anything but to i don't know be and to pray for a draw uh, they should be more than happy to make a draw, but of course, black is just so much better close to be winning here. Instead of queen e2, they play bishop e2. Nothing. You just take on d5. You're up a pawn. Castles, kick the knight away. And after knight f3, say, hey, buddy, I'm going to play bishop d7 and play long castle, solidifying myself, uh, solving problems with the king on c8, and see you next time. So just because of that, after queen e7, they got to go with a king f1. That's the main move. And here, you have to play knight e5. Knight e5 chases the light square bishop away. And in a way, you got to be very happy with the existing position because they also have problems with kind of exposed knight, weak king on f1, bishop on c4 that at the moment is threatened. And don't forget, we're still up a pawn. So when they get a pawn back, we take on c4. That's my suggestion. Uh, you have many other possibilities, but easiest is to take the bishop pair. Game is open. We got a bishop pair. We should be happy with that. Kick the knight away with h6 and say, hey, man, 
let's trade the queens off. I'm happy. Why? First of all, I have I have two bishops. Second thing, pawn on d5 is kind of weak. Third thing, king on f1 is in the middle of nowhere. Uh, consequently, uh, that rook on f1 is uh, also bad. Sorry, on h1. Uh, also, they have lots of problems with undeveloped pieces in the back rank. So, all things considered, black has to be considered here at least slightly better, if not between slightly and much. And uh, the difference between those two assessments is very close. So that's all about Morphe's line with the fifth move, knight g5. Castles. Castle is one of the critical options. And on castle, you have nothing else and nothing better but to take on e4. At the moment, you're up to pawns and they have to play rookie one. But if they don't play rookie one, I'll remind you on one practical thing. If they play c3, please don't you dare to take on c3 because then they just go queen d5 and you're lost. But because knight is hanging, mate on f7 is hanging, and on c3, you just play d5. Any d5 in these positions that goes down with tempo, attacking this bishop on c4 is just perfect for us because we'll be playing bishop g4, bishop e7, and play short castle. Once we complete development, we'll be up at least a pawn, and it should be enough to win the game. Sixth move, which is also bad, is bishop d5. Some guys like to avoid d5, but in this case it also doesn't work because you bring the knight back, threatening bishop with tempo, play bishop e7 castles and go home, buddy. Knight d4, like let's grab the pawn back, once again doesn't seem to be working because of d5 because it simultaneously defends the pawn, the knight on e4 and attacks the bishop on c4. So when they play bishop e5, you play bishop d7. When they take, you take. And when they play rook e1, they threaten f3 to win the piece. You just play bishop e7 and see you next time, buddy. So all things considered, they have to play Nackman's on Gambit or they have to play rook e1. I'll stop here. Uh, a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago during the COVID, one of the most popular videos and one of the most popular systems for white was this Nackmanson Gambit. Uh, nowadays, it's not anymore. Uh, Black found the paths to uh, treat this variation and uh, I'm going to give you a very practical solution. If you analyze this on the engine, engine keeps giving you some D takes uh, C3 lines. No, I won't give you that. And that's not going to be my practical solution you gotta learn uh, and to you gotta you gotta be very pragmatic when you play your games so after knight c3 my vote goes to knight take c3 no i'm not interested in peace i'm gonna go with uh, knight c3 for all those uh, smart uh, guys who are just going to say hey, maya what are you suggesting here engine says d take c3 don't you dare to think like that because d takes c3 objectively according to the engine is the best but you're not engines you won't be able to find all those crazy defensive moves that engines can find so play human chess knight takes c3 you're at the moment up to pawns d5 and all you have to remember that's a crucial thing don't you ever take on c3 taking on c3 leads to an immediate disaster after 95 and after this variation so they give you a check <coughs> and then after bishop is seven sorry they go with 95 threatening here and when you play bishop d7 they just go with knight d7 queen d7 and bishop a3 i believe it's enough to say a hey, sweetheart see you next time learn your uh, black pieces opening and how to treat neckmans and gambit just because of that we don't play d takes c3 we play d5 so knight c3 b takes d5 and after bishop e5 not d takes c3 but bishop e7 if they take the pawn you play castle i'm up a pawn see you next time if knight e5 knight e5 they just threaten on c6 you go bishop d7 they take c takes castle i'm up a pawn i'm a healthy pawn up you maybe have some bishop here and can maybe claim some sort of 
compensation, but I don't see how. Maybe on some activity, maybe s somehow on these bishops, but definitely black is just easily much better. And finally, those who play rook e1. Watch this out. Knight is on e-file and king is on e-file. You can play this variation if you don't know next couple of moves and or uh, let's actually call it like a four sequence of moves. So how do we play after rook e1? You just have to go with d5. So you attack this bishop and by now you just learned that d5 opens up your bishop, gives you full activity. Uh, when it attacks the bishop on c4 and defends the knight on e4, it just sounds perfect. Main line goes with bishop takes d5. And after queen takes d5, you just go, they, uh, sorry, white goes with knight c3. You have to go with a queen on a5. There are so many different moves. I like queen on a5. And when they take, watch this out, they threaten discover check followed by king d8 and rook e8 mate. So bishop e6. What's the point of bishop e6? You just close the e file and you're preparing yourself uh, to put in a long castle and to put your king in safety this way. They gotta urgently get a pawn back. You play long castles, knight e6, f takes, rook e6. At the moment, position is equal. But here I have a specialty for you. All these engines, all these um, older books and analysis articles, they just cover some uh, bishop d6 for black, followed by rook f8, <laughs> queen h5, and so on. That wouldn't be my suggestion. My vote goes to h6. You avoid bishop g5, that's the first thing. And second thing, you just want to go with g5 yourself and g4 at some point. So when they play queen e2, because everybody will do that because uh, they are so fond of this open e file, you just bring your queen to d5. Queen on d5 doesn't only control and comes into the center, but it also at some point uh, makes some uh, eyeing on the rook on e6, knight on f3, and pawn on a2. So when they play bishop d2, absolutely the most aggressive approach goes with the bishop on c5. This bishop on c5 gives you rook h to f8 ideas, gives you some d3 ideas, and gives you some very nasty threats. I remember one of my friends didn't want to play rook e1 against me in a blitz game because a2 was hanging, or he wasn't sure should he give up this or not. So he played a3. I urgently played rook h to f8, putting some pressure against this. Keep in mind, rook f3 is an idea here because queen cannot take queen e6, and if g takes, then I have d3 followed by knight d4. So he played rook e1, I played d3, he captured, and I played knight e4. When I, when I recaptured by bishop, he had problems with rook f2. He can't play bishop e3 because rook would be hanging, and after rook f1, I took on b2. Afterwards, I easily managed to win this game because he had to confront himself with two weaknesses, pawn on a3 and pawn on d3. Only move is rook e4. I'm showing you one correspondence game, d3. You just exchange everything and position after bishop c3, rook g8, king f1, a5, because you have three against two on the queen side, is just a round drawish. And they made the draw afterwards. And finally, let's take a look at the main line. And here I'll show you a very recent game from Serbian uh, First League uh, where my club mate, Grandmaster Ivic, destroyed his opponent in just 17 moves, according to latest analysis. So after knight f6, why just goes with e5? You just go with... Uh, classic approach is d5, bishop b 5 and now I have approaches, either main line with the knight e4, or aligned with the knight d7. But Ivic in this game uh, went for knight e4. Uh, this became a very popular line lately for black because knight jumps on e4 and it sometimes, of course, black just wants to go with d5, but also this knight can reroute itself with knight c5, knight e6. So there are so many moves. It's important to remember any c3 you don't take because of a classic queen d5 and you're lost but you actually go with d5 
chasing this bishop away and after e takes you just recapture by knight you defend f7 you chase away the bishop you want to complete your development with bishop e7 short castle i don't need to show you more than this it's important to know you're already much better since you're still up a pawn in the case of castle you just go d5 that's major thing and one of the crucial points about this one knight takes d6 to threaten this bishop on c4 and when they go with the rook e1 bishop e7 bishop d5 castles and now if they greedily go for bishop c6 knight e4 they threaten this to win the game on the spot you go queen d7 and you go bishop f6 even though we've got a broken pawn structure with the bishop pair, with an open game, with a better development, and the lack of enough minor pieces around the white's king, I kind of like my initiative because I can always go with some c5, bishop e7, rook a d8, rook f to e8 if needed afterwards, but I'm not happy to exchange so many pieces because I want to attack. If they go with the bishop d5, that's a very interesting move that bishop d5 move uh, goes against the knight on e4 and it fights against your main idea and your main idea is just uh, d5 so when they go with bishop d5 you just bring your knight back to c5 castles and play bishop e7 they get the pawn crucial move here that you gotta defend you gotta remember feel free to grab the pawn i know it looks scary i know it looks terrifying at first glance but if rookie one d6 buddy f4 knight g6 i'm up a pawn any f5 i'll oppose with knight e5 i want to just play short castle and what are you going to do how are you going to defend your position no way after bishop d5 knight c5 castles bishop e7 what happens if they go knight f5 nothing just bishop f6 Another surprising move. He goes f4, knight g6. He gives you check, king on f8. Even though it looks um, probably, it's not probably, it's a little bit weak. But you know what? We're up a pawn. They also committed themselves with some sort of weakness with f4. King is a little bit weak. I just want to play c6, d5, or d6. I'm going to play h6, king, h, king g8, king h7. Uh, I'll block this bishop with knight e6 if needed, whatever. I want to play c6, d5 to fight against it. Definitely black is so much better. And finally, let me just show you the main line. Critical variation against uh, according to the engines. Queen e2, Ivich went knight c5. His opponent, Fide Master, went with castle. By the way, keep in mind, tournament game, two and a half hours per player, uh, league, the game... Uh, taken place in Serbia uh, three weeks ago. 96. This 96 is a good move because they have to play c3 to go for development. While uh, in case of bishop takes e6, f takes e6 is important thing. So when they want to get a pawn back with a rook d1, you play bishop e7 to complete their development with castle. When they take on d4, you play castle with the bishop pair. With idea um of b6 bishop c5 b6 bishop b7 queen e8 queen g6 uh even d5 in some positions black is so much better i i would uh, engine would say yeah. this is like unclear uh but definitely 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 i prefer this position a lot more with the black pieces they, that's why uh engines and all these good players uh, go with c3 they just want to tell you okay i'm ready to sack a pawn for a full initiative and i don't want to give you that famous d5 by black but then you say okay you want to stop that but i don't want to play like this so you play d5 they capture you capture by bishop c takes d4 and you go castle it's very important not to panic they don't have d5 that's why i put a red color if they play d5 you just jump here you trade like a pair of knights play c5 what are you you're according to the engine you threaten bishop f5 you want to play b5 at some point and according to the engines you're almost winning i wouldn't go that far but for sure we're just so much better with the black pieces so after c takes d4 castles bishop e3 ivich played knight f4 his opponent had to play 
bishop f4, which happened in the game Mamedov Matlakov. And after queen e4, threatening this bishop with the bishop d3, Matlakov played a very human move at first glance. It's bishop d6 and lost. It was uh, in uh, Poland 2021 Blitz World Championship. But here, I'm bringing you better novelty, bishop h6. I want to complete my development, not development, but I want to uh, uh, create kind of a fortress around my king playing g6, going back with the bishop on g7, playing bishop f5 afterwards, and going after the, the pawn on d4. So this is a big improvement, and I believe black is just better in comparison to the game Mamedov Matlakov played like a few months ago. Uh, if each opponent played queen d2, looks normal, and if each played queen f6. I found three tournament games, tournament games, not blitz games, tournament games, uh, being played like this. This was the last moment for uh, white to take on f4, and at least to, you know, like, uh, first of all, to delay his res uh, resignation, and second thing, to prolong his suffering. So after bishop f4, black would be so much better thanks to the bishop pair, i, q, p, and d4, but at least they would still have to play a lot more. White played knight c3, and take a look at this spectacular finish of the following game. Ivic captured on g2. He sacrifices the knight and goes for a very common tactical trick uh, when the king takes on g2. Then he sacrifices another bishop, say, hey, man, you got to take it. If you move the king, queen f3, unstoppable mate. So he had to go king h3, if each capture, played king h4. And here everything is winning. But unfortunately, you can't play bishop e7 because of bishop g5. So made a beautiful knight d4. That's kind of deflection because he now threatens uh, to play uh, like... Uh, Knight f5, bishop e7. His opponent took by queen, played bishop e7, bishop g5, bishop g5, h6, and after king h4, played g5. What a beautiful game. Uh, you cannot even imagine how important this game was for a current Scotch Gambit uh, situation and uh, possibilities for black. And I really think it's one of the best ways of fighting e4 and Scotch Gambit with black pieces. Thanks for watching. You forgot about the nations, but I didn't, so it would be good to see some more. Uh, also, subscribe on the channel and tell your friends about uh, this spectacular channel and everything what we're actually offering here. Thanks so much. See you next time.